Pink? I'm going next to slip six. Get with Terry on that. Oh my I gotta do everything? Yeah. You're the deck hand, that's what the deck hand does. Everything. They're on the starboard side of the ship. I'm waving to them. See if they wave back. Yeah, look at the red head of Windows 14. I know, I looked right in there. Oh my god, she wore that to her landing? Hey, she's not from New York. What do you want? All right, Grandpa, let's let her go. Yes, sir, Captain, sir. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I can hear what you're saying, Mike. There's perhaps no boat more classically boaty than the tugboat. What five-year-old alive hasn't dreamt of either piloting a tugboat or being a tugboat? But most people's experience of tugboats is kind of like at Norton's at 25th hour. It's just a you know, pleasant thing you see passing on the water that makes you think, huh, would that be the life? But would it, in fact, be the life? The Catherine Miller is one of the 100-plus tugs in New York Harbor, pushing, pulling, and towing the various barges and container ships that bring in the products that make New York City a place where 8 million people can live. The Catherine's moored down in Staten Island, where Wu-Tang is from, and run by the two-man team of Captain John Catamaro and Mike Mikey Carlick. Since I don't have a captain's license for Tug About You, I'll be joining Mikey as a deckhand, learning in ropes, both figurative and literal, of life on these plucky little boats. Sure, something with ropes. Fuck the rope, man. Coffee. Oh, you got some serious learning to do. Straighten that filter out. Straighten that filter out. Because if you give me coffee with grinds in it, I'm gonna dog you all day. You give me right, grinds. Right, right. I don't like weak coffee either. Ten cups only. Ten cups. Take it entirely too long. I want my coffee this morning, not this afternoon. How many deck cans do you guys usually have on a boat? It depends on how many can survive. Close enough now. Let's okay, go. Okay. We want coffee today. Does the captain want some? Call up and ask him if he wants. You want coffee, captain? 1400. Cooling operations will also have to be here, too. All right, here's what you got. Stand right here. All right. Look straight. That's what do you see? The uh, crane. Back yeah. of the crane. Yeah. What do you see on the water in front of you? Nothing. That's really. right. We have our barge, which is 160 feet. We have our crane boom hanging 60 feet over the bow. OK. Then we have our boat, we'll call it 65. So you're steering a 200-foot vessel, and you can't see where you are. Nope. So how do you suppose that's going to work out? I would assume I would use things, yeah, like devices. Be no? Nope. You wait for your deckhand to tell you where you are. Right. That's what you're doing up there. You're the eyes and ears of the captain. So, hey, Mikey, what do you see? What do you see out there? A lot of water. That's a good sign, right? Stay there for right now. Who's the nerdy kid? He's the he's the deckhand in training. He looks like the guy from Ghostbusters. Remember Ghostbusters? Yeah. The nerdy guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so Mike's basically the dictionary definition of like an old Jersey salt. I'm kind of curious how long he's been working in tugs in the harbor. Wind it up. There is a flash packet and a packet of fame. Now use the handle. Thomas, bring it on. You can do it. All the way. Get really tight. Hard as a rock. On the way to the westward and the dreadnought we go. Derry down, 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 down. Walk it. More slack. Whip it. Give it direction. Give it, give it direction. There we go. So now we're going to get the Buckley and put it in place of the scout. Roger that. Shake it bacon, Mikey. Shake it and bacon. Lock it down. So far, the bulk of tug work seems to be barge rearrangement. Move several barges out of the way this morning. Let's go. To move another barge into one of their places, move the other barges back. Basically, like kind of playing aquatic Tetris. 
You still need five port. Five port. Five port. Give me five port. Come on. Five port. And then there's like a lariat component too. The two basic skill sets of a tugboat deckhand. Good at Tetris and can lasso. Gigantic ropes. These are very heavy too, by the way. They're also wet. Don't be so rigid. Have a little confidence. No, never grab a line like that. No. That's how you lose your fingers. Just so you do know, yeah. the next time you put a fing wire on a bit with my hands and you're holding a fing eye like that, all right, that's a no. Like, believe I'm gonna slap you because that'll take off my fingers. Long it, it'll rip the bones right apart. Right, right, right. No, that is the fastest way of losing your fing hands. Okay, always the line, always the line. Okay, if something goes wrong, you drop it, it's fine, we can get it back. Don't get hurt. All right, the minute you get hurt, that's it. It's for life. Yeah. No, don't do that. I will fucking hit you, though. Okay. You notice I have gloves on. Right. You know why I have gloves on? Check out my fingers. I want you to see something. Look at that. See them yeah. all? Yeah. Mikey, yeah. come here. Show them your fingers, Mike. You like mine? Something different. Cockeyed, ain't it? Yeah. What about this one? They're short. Yeah. Why are they short? I was moving barges one day, and my hand was like this, yeah, underneath. Was... When that line came tight, yeah. it crushed my fingers. It literally pulled so tight, it slid right off. Ooh. This was just bone you were looking at? Oh, yeah. You know, you know the pirate movies? Yeah. Where you see the pirates sitting there, and, and you see that pointed little bone sticking out like, like towards the treasure? Yeah. They really do look like that. Jesus. They really do. But we, we put you through this. So you understand what it is you're doing and why you're doing it. And we'll keep repeating ourselves till we make sure you understand what it is we do. We try to go home in one piece. Get the job done and go home in one piece happy. Because there's always somebody at home that wants to see you. They may not love you a lot, but they do want to see you once in a while. You look like you're breaking a sweat out there, Tom. I recommend more cigarettes. The guy with the fingers, watch the fingers, Mike. Your fingers again, right there, watch his fingers. Use the f line. Only the line. Go. How far off that ship, Tom? You're about 250. All right, I'd say more like 75, but keep going with it. I keep thinking I've kind of got the tricks down to uh, throwing ropes and coiling them and tying the right figure eights and shit like that. Ooh. It's either I keep doing things that are different or I keep misremembering things. I think it takes a lot of practice. Hey, what's your ETA to the launch? I'm right at the launch now. Uh, OK, you're going to take uh, Mike Carlick, or uh, am I putting Mike Carlick on the Samantha? Is that, you just said Mike Carlick or no? No, no, what am I doing? I can't... You were going to get on the Susan to go and get Marty. My job is one, cultivating new clients mm. and taking care of our old ones. Your sales then? That's part of it. Ray, you on here? They'll tell me when they want a boat or when they want a barge or whatever it is that they need. And then I have to figure out who would be best to be able to take the barge or materials or whatever. Are you gonna go with him on the Samantha? No, because you never told me nothing about it. Why don't you tell me anything about it? I don't have to tell you. <laughs> I map it out. Right. So I then, I'm now a dispatcher. Do we have everything for the Samantha to go up? And that every day is fun, every day is new, every day is different. It's pretty cool. Now what's the, what are the dots on your board? These are all one type of vessel or another. Yeah. So I know exactly where they are at any given moment pan out, and you'll see how busy this harbor is. Neat. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff going on. Mm hmm The Catherine Miller is part of a tugboat fleet owned by Glenn Miller, whose ships are all named for members of the Miller family, although oddly not himself. The shipwreck that we're salvaging today is down there under this kind of circle of boom. Um, I think it's a pretty small boat. If I could only hear you. If I, come on up here. Okay, no, 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 come here. Come here, sit, sit down here. Talk to him. Okay, talk to him. 
How you doing? You understand that? I can understand you. I can't right. Get the f out. You're gonna run this? Uh, I'll pop up and watch you. See? Yeah, I can't hear him either. No. <laughs> Who's the main contractor? Who's running this thing? Uh, it's my brother company. It's called Miller Environmental. Oh, OK. And the guy who's hiring us is the Coast Guard. The reason for removing this is it's uh, okay. an environmental reason, because it probably has fuel on board. Yeah. So they, uh, the Coast Guard wants to step in and prevent an oil spill from happening. How long ago did it wreck? I understand two years ago. OK. And it's kind of a mystery. Nobody knows who owns it. They just scooted out of town? There's not going to be, like, skeletons in there, are there? I'm going down now. Is it upside down? It's upside down, but I'm trying to see. I'm just getting my bearings. Ask him, what the f is he doing down there? Let's go, man. Does he think he can get a hook on it? Possible. You have a hammer. What do voters make of salvagers? Is that like humans think of vultures kind of thing? Is there sort of like bad blood there? No, not at all. I mean, salvages or salvors are a necessary part of the industry. OK. So I, I am a salver myself. Oh. And the whole business from its inception was actually started by my dad. His story goes way back to a uh, very famous disaster out in Montauk, something known as the Pelican. Booming down. The Pelican was a charter boat that rolled over and killed 40 people. They hired a 16-year-old kid to go swimming underneath and recovering all the dead guys. And that oh, was my dad. Jesus. It's yeah. a horror movie. It's a horror movie. And his father sailed his whole life. So I would be the third generation. Oh, shit, here it comes. Hey, there it is. OK, let's see what we got. Nice and slow. Oh, it's a boat. It's a looking boat. We've spent about 10 hours rescue. It completely rusted out, 20 foot. I don't even know what type of boat. I guess some sort of tug, but not much of one. What do you think the odds are it's full of gold doubloons? Coming down easy. Uh, today we're working over in Port Newark in New Jersey. Newark was one of the first container ports and is now, I think, the biggest on the East Coast and third biggest in America. As the ports in New York sort of declined and got turned into like parks and soccer fields, oyster bars, Newark's taken up the slack and is now, I think, the biggest port on the East Coast. There's tons of stacks behind me. It's basically container land here. And this is pretty much where any good you buy in New York or pretty much anywhere in the tri-state area. If it's coming in by boat, it's going to come here. It's commodities relocation. That's all we are, relocators. And waterways is the easiest way to move large quantities of commodities. You can move more on a barge than you can do in a caravan of tractor trailers. You don't make planes the size of these ships, either. Oh, they, even what you see, there's how much more down below? <laughs> you know, there's a hierarchy. The deckhand does what the captain tells them to do. But oftentimes, since your deckhand is the eyes and ears of the captain, the captain has to do what the deckhand tells him. Your captain is no better than your deckhand. Your deckhand is no better than your captain. He's your proxy on the barge. Very much so. Come on in. But you'll hear him say at times, I need to put my barge here. And this is what I want you to do. OK. Go ahead. It gets the job done. There's no ego involved. You can't have that. How's John today? <laughs> A hemorrhoid. I've <laughs> been wondering with the hours these guys keep, uh, when they go, you know, and see their families. I'm starting to guess they kind of don't. I think Mikey stays here, John maybe drives home, but um, kind of feels like they form their own sort of family. 
You know, you have Mikey, who's obviously a grandfather figure. And Captain John is sort of like a wacky uncle. And you got Terry, who's uh, on the phone all the time, kind of like their mom. And then Glenn, who runs the whole place, the boss is, you know, it's kind of like a very dadly disposition. So it's like a weird sort of dysfunctional sea family, whatever constellation that is. Oh, long day. Now you see what our days are like. Yeah. This is what they are. Wow. Wow. Just dinner? Yep. The wife's on the way. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is the commute. This is, this is the illustrious commute. And this is a famous box. Two on each wall, four in each room, two rooms. Mattress is nice and comfy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is somebody sleeping in there? Nobody's in there. No, OK. No. I was trying to be quiet. If there was, they'd have been whining already. Yeah. <laughs> you mind going getting stuck by the coffee maker? Okay. I've had to get up at 4 in the morning. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Oh, 4 in the morning. Come on, son. You already got nine hours sleep. You Damn. The box. You only need three hours sleep. Box. Come on now. Come on now. All right. Sorry. Right. Thanks. So he, how many? He don't, he don't like giggles. <laughs> How many grandkids do you have again? 18. 18. Did any of them work on boats too, or are you the only? Seaman? Actually, believe it or not, that's that's actually how I, I actually started here. Yeah. Uh, one of my sons was working here. Because before that, you were doing. Uh... I turned wrenches. Yeah, you were a mechanic. Yeah. I came down to help out, and I've been here since. Yeah. Oh. Are you gonna retire ever? You think or be retire? On boat? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> nah. Yeah. Uh-uh, nah. See, my grandkids, they, they make sure Pop's never gonna get old. Yeah. That ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna get dead one day, but I'm not gonna get old. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna have you do this, okay? I'm gonna walk you through it. Okay, come up on the load. Nope. Pull them up. Up. Don't stop. If you stop, it'll come down. <sighs> um. <sighs> Shit. I might need a hand, I'm sorry. Oh. This is your steering implement. We don't have a wheel. Look at your radar, OK? That's a barge anchor. That's a barge and boat anchor. That's a buoy. Current's coming this way. It's going to be deflected off this landmass out here. And at times, there's a slight rotary current. Hey, go under. Under the ear. Take it off, put it under. Lead it under the horn. Lead it under the horn. There you yeah. go. Don't lift anymore. Break in, break up. You have to swing to your left, boom down, cable up at the same time. There's a lot to keep in mind at the same time. Westbound with the crane, see on one. Westbound with the crane, see on one. Right, you captain. You captain, that's wild. Never been called captain. the idea. I'm gonna make a real captain out of you. Oh, okay. Now put your feet up. There you go. Pick up a car. Slower. Keep on coming down. Keep coming. Stop. All right, get ready. Big heave. One, two, three. Nice. Well done. Good job. the autopilot on. So you're doing great. Keep up the good work. So today is the New York Tough Boat Race. Uh, this happens once a year on Labor Day Sunday. All the tugs from New York Harbor get together and they race for like, for like a fifth of a mile, maybe. But it's a big family day. Boats. These boats 
do everything from helping cruise ships to moving fuel uh, to helping get the big commercial ships in the harbor that bring everything into our city. Here we go. Three, two, one. Check out the jet skiers coming our way. Yeah, it's gonna be a problem. Oh, they're going crazy. All right, next up for the line top. This is Tom. He's brand new on the boat. He's been doing this for three days. All right, everybody, give Tom a warm welcome to his tugboat life. I've got a really bad feeling right now. <laughs> with all our technological advancements. The way we get most of our goods from one place to another is still to literally ship them. The craft of shipping itself is still very much feels like an ancient trade. You're still learning the same secrets of ropes and reading the waves and learning tides as people did when they first discovered the Americas. You know, a lot of hands-on work, it's very dangerous, but your reward is being at sea, which is an enchanting proposition. Brian Eno described it, there's no more magical substance on Earth than water. And we create these vessels that we can enjoy its wondrous properties. Working on a tugboat is almost like taking a vacation while working, while doing some of the hardest work there is to do. I think I finally understand why Sterling Morrison left the Velvet Underground to pursue a life as a tugboat captain. It's the place he wanted to be. It's the place he could be happy.